Hello and welcome to Code with Sar. How are you doing today? Let's keep building the backend for the fish card. Last time we talked about the different HTTP verbs, get, post, put, patch, and delete, and the corresponding CRUD operations. And this time, let's talk about routing. When we hit a HTTP endpoint, it is a routing which decides where the traffic goes to. For example, if we are invoking a HTTP GET on localhost 5222 fish items, in an ASP.NET Core backend, it is a routing that decides where the request got sent to and which method to call to get a response. In this example, fish items maps to the controller and the HTTP GET method narrows it down to get all. All these are done through different attributes, whether that is route or whether that is the HTTP GET. So this routing mechanism is called attribute routing. Now there are other ways to do routing. This is one of the commonly used one. And in this video, we're going to focus on it. Routing is complex. Attribute routing, on the other hand, it's pretty simple actually. We only have two types of attributes to deal with. And you have already seen both of them. The first one is this route attribute. And the second type is HTTP method attribute. Among them, route could be used on the class or used on the method. And the HTTP method attributes could only be used on the methods. And the string parameter that it takes in is called a route template. Those templates are used to match traffic. The way it works is very simple. The route template on the class applies to every single method. It is just like a prefix. And then the attributes on the methods apply only to the methods by itself. And the full template, of course, is then the combination of the one on the controller and then on the methods. In general, you will encounter three things inside a template. The one that you are seeing here, the controller inside the uh, square brackets, that's called a token replacement. And that's one thing that could show up. The second possibility is the string literal. For example, we could put the AAA in front of the controller. And the third one is the string in those curly braces. And those are parameters. For example, the fish idea, that's a parameter. And this fish ID maps to that fish ID on the method. And putting those together, it forms up a destination or a path. And when we type in something inside the browser or through Postman, the routing system is going to match the traffic and eventually decide which method is going to invoke. Or in the case that if it cannot find anything, it's going to return a 404. Let's see it in action. Let's start the web API. Now that we have AAA in front of the controller, if we want to invoke get all, the path that we're going to use is AAA fish items. Here we go. It's an empty array with the status code 200. And now you know AAA matched the literal text AAA and fish items match the name of the controller. Now, how about method? Well, by an educational guess, that is decided by the attributes on the methods. In that example, since we are using HTTP verb of get, the router then knows to call this get all method. Pay a little bit of attention to this add method it has the same path, but it uses another verb, post. Now you see it. It is those two parts working together to forming up a route template. And the ASP.NET Core is going to use the route template to match the URL and the HTTP verb. And then it knows where to redirect the traffic to. OK, now we understand the routing framework. Let's talk about the specifics. First, what are other token replacement that exist? I mean, other than controller, there are two, area and action. Let's see an example. 
Let me update the route of the controller to area slash controller slash action. Guess what will happen? You're probably going to get a build error that area doesn't exist. So let's create an area. Now let's see how to invoke the same get all. It's so going to be localhost 5222 slash hello as area and then fish items, the controller. But what is an action? Well, that's the method name. So let's say get all. So you see it? Area, controller, action. Now let's talk about uh, parameters. Well, there are several types of parameter, and the ones that we're going to talk about here is route parameter. These parameters look like it's part of the path. If we design it well, they will look very natural. A typical example is year, month, date for blog post. And those are actually parameters for the system to partition all the blog posts. Another example is going to be ID for product, ID for customer, and of course, ID for fish. Let's see a basic example. I'll firstly recover the route on the controller. And then we're trying to hit this uh, get single fish endpoint. Notice the last portion in the path will be used as the value of fish ID. The type of the parameter is a GUID now. For this demo, let me lose it a little bit to a string. And I'll output the value to the console. Let's see what happens. Firstly, this route is not going to work. I removed the area. It's not going to match any route template. So let me remove hello from the path. Now, which items match the controller? The get all is interesting. It matched the action before, but the action has been removed. And now it will happen to be matching the parameter of fish ID. Let's try it. And that's how we use parameters. Let's try a different value. Let's call it parameter value. And here we go. In ASP.NET Core, you could put a constraint on the parameter. For example, the fish ID. We're only going to deal with it when it is a GUID. Then we can put a constraint like this. Now, if we go ahead and try to hit the endpoint with the parameter, but the parameter is not in form of a GUID, what will happen? It returns 404. But sir, there's no content in the list. It, of course it's 404. Or is it? Let's try to hit it again with a random generated GUID. Here we get 204. Why? In this case, the request succeeded. It's just that there's no content. But when we're giving a URL, the prior example with the number in it, there's no routing parameter to match the URL. Remember how it works for the routing system? You either input the URL, the router matches it with the one of the template, and when nothing matched, it returns 404. In other words, once you put a constraint there, the system now knows the type of the parameter. And if the URL doesn't satisfy the constraint, it won't route the traffic over. It will return 404. Now, it's not only types. It could be length, minimum value, max value, all kinds of things. And I'll put the link, of course, uh, to the official documentation for the complete list. Um, what else? Our parameters could be optional. The way you do it is to put a question mark toward the end of the parameter. It's going to be the very last character. And also, you need to be careful about it. Because if it is optional, it becomes a little bit more easier to run into conflicts. Think about this get example. If the fish ID is optional, 
and the user goes to HTTP localhost 5222 slash fish items, it's going to match two templates, the one to return all, or this one with an optional fish ID. Although it won't be the end of the world, ASP.NET Core have some rules to, um, to compute the precedence, to align with the common sense. So usually those more specific ones will match first. And also there's an other attribute that you could leverage if you really, really, really have to deal with that situation. I'd say we designed the route carefully, not get us into that situation. Debug is difficult already. The less ambiguity, the easier our life would be. And the third thing that I want to mention about parameter is that you could supply a default value. Once the default value is supplied by the equal sign, by the way, the parameter automatically becomes optional. So you don't need the question mark any further. But of course, the ambiguity is still there. Lastly, slug. And that is uh, anything after the template match. This is useful when you need to transfer the request from one place to another and you want to keep everything on the route. The way to do it is prefix the parameter with an asterisk. In real life projects, I have ever only used it once. Here I'll give you an example. If you don't need it, you don't need it. But if you do, you know it exists. For the demo, I'll start a new route. Oh, by the way, a trick to bypass the route on the controller to start the route on the method with a slash. For example, the route here will be slash forwards rather than fish items slash forwards. And uh, let's actually echo the value. Now let's run the test. We'll go to localhost 5222 forwards. Let's say hello world. And let's add a little bit more. Another part. As you can see, everything after the forwards is taken by one parameter. If you've ever found this useful in a different scenario, please share it below. That's all I have at this moment to share about the routing. So route attribute, HTTP method attributes, and used by those attributes, there is that uh, route template. There could be string literals in the template. There could be token replacement. And there's parameters. Uh, by parameters, I mean required parameter, optional parameter, or parameters with the default values. Nice luck. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a thumb up. Nice. All right, my friends. Keep coding, keep improving. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.